Welcome friends to another r slash entitled parents video. You know what the best way to get back at these entitled parents are? Hitting that like and subscribe button down below. It takes just a second and it really helps and it makes those entitled parents really mad. That said, our first story of the day is by kgirl08. Entitled mother tried to keep me in special ed classes. I was born with three conditions that combined together gave the impression to others that I was slow. The first was that I was born cross-eyed. I spent my childhood in those very heavy, thick glasses to try and correct my eyes and they never worked. I remember as a small toddler seeing two doors and trying to figure out which one to walk through and more likely than not I would walk into a wall. Even as an adult, my depth perception is practically non-existent, so as a small child learning to walk and navigate the world, it became very difficult. The second issue was that I had severe ear aches. We're talking about ear infections that would burst regularly. I had a difficult time hearing people when they spoke, and often missed conversations, directions, and general environmental cues. The third issue was that I had an undiagnosed condition called tongue-tied. It's where the thick tissue under the tongue will prevent the full range of motion of the tongue, so the person who suffers from it won't talk right. Just try holding your tongue with your fingers and then talking. That's how I spoke for most of my childhood. This went undiagnosed for so long because most doctors assumed I couldn't talk correctly because I couldn't hear correctly. I was in speech therapy until I was in third grade, at which time I was somehow diagnosed correctly, underwent a simple procedure, and could talk fine after that. This meant most people perceived me as slow because I couldn't walk by myself, wouldn't talk most of the time, and rarely responded when spoken to unless you were looking directly at me. As an adult looking back, I honestly believe Entitled Mother was happy about my conditions because she got a lot of sympathy for how her daughter was. To make things worse, people assumed that since I was slow, I must not understand what they're saying and would pretty much voice their opinions in front of me. I heard from most of my childhood that I was slow, the R word, or blind, deaf, and dumb. I didn't know when I was very young that these terms were negative, but as I grew up, I understood most people didn't think a lot of me. Also because of this perception, my entitled mother wouldn't bother to hide most of her evil behavior, thinking I was too stupid to understand what she was doing anyways. So fast forward to kindergarten, and I was enrolled in the school down the street from my grandparents' farm. This school was a small country school that went from kindergarten to 8th grade. When you graduated from this school, you then transferred to one of the two high schools available depending on where you lived. Both of these schools were complete, meaning they offered kindergarten to 12th grade education. That'll be relevant later. Once enrolled, I didn't understand that I was treated differently. I was bullied because I looked funny, talked funny, and my clothes were hand-me-downs. I had no idea we were poor. I remember sitting at a different table when it was reading time and while other kids were reading about Jane and Spot, I was coloring at a table in the corner wondering why I couldn't read about Jane and Spot. From kindergarten to sixth grade, I made poor grades and never really participated in a lot of the lessons that my other classmates participated in. The school was small, my entire fifth grade class was the largest class in middle school and we had 14 students. My 5th and 6th grade years were the worst for me in terms of the bullying from my classmates and even from some of the teachers. I really think the teachers had endured years of dealing with entitled mother and took their frustrations out on me. I have two older brothers, my oldest is 3 years older and the other was 2 years older, so when I was in 6th grade, my oldest brother was already in high school and my other brother was in the 8th grade. When it came time for my other brother to transfer to the high school, the decision was made to go ahead and transfer me as well so that I wouldn't be left alone at the school for two more years. And this is where the story begins. The cast is me, entitled mother, naive grandma, grandpa, awesome teacher, and principal. The first day of 7th grade at my new school was an experience that I will never forget. I received a schedule that said I had to move from classroom to classroom depending on the subject I was assigned. Remember. I came from a school where we were in the same class all day long for every subject. I entered the class which was empty, picked a seat towards the center of the room and sat down. Two girls entered the room shortly after, just chattering away. They saw me and greeted me with a hi. I said hi back and not much else, but I was amazed they talked to me because I was used to classmates ignoring me. My first period was math, and when class started, the teacher, who will from this point on be called Awesome Teacher, greeted the class and passed out the math books. I remember thinking that the math book was so big and was excited to have gotten it. 
kids were talking all around me, and most of the kids had been going to school together since kindergarten, so everyone was interested in the new girl in the classroom. Me. I wasn't sitting at a table in the corner, I was actually in the middle of everything. Awesome teacher began the review process of what the kids had learned the previous year, and I sat and paid attention, and for some reason, even though I had never learned the material she was discussing, everything made sense to me. We were actually assigned homework on the first day, and I left first period feeling a little overwhelmed. The rest of the day was pretty much the same, and at the end of the day, I had two classes that assigned homework. I got off the bus that day and ran to grandparents' house and sat at the kitchen table and proudly told naive grandma that I had homework to do. I had never had homework before. Naive grandma was excited for me and fixed me a snack and told me homework was first before playing, so she says, get to work. She said this with a smile. That first week was great. Teachers would ask questions and expect that I would answer, and I was involved in assignments and I quickly realized that my favorite subject was going to be math. I made a friend as well, so I thought things had finally turned for me. Then, midway through the second week, the principal entered the room with a piece of yellow paper in his hand. He walked over to Awesome Teacher's desk and was trying to talk to her in a low tone and was showing her the paper. I really didn't pay any attention until I heard my name. I look up and saw Awesome Teacher with her hand on the paper and she was looking at Principal and she said, that's not right, something isn't right. With that, Awesome Teacher addressed the class and told us to continue with our assignment and then she and Principal left the room. After what seemed like an eternity, she came back in and went to her desk. She briefly looked my way but didn't say anything to me and soon the class was over. I left the classroom and went to second period, wondering if I was in trouble for something. Nothing seemed out of sort until after lunch when the principal came and got me and took me to the library and had me take a seat. He told me that since I was new to the school, they were going to have me take a few tests and that I wasn't in trouble and that this was just a standard process for all new students. I thought, okay, and spent the rest of the afternoon taking these tests and it felt like they were never ending. After the tests were all complete, I was asked to go ahead and work on any assignments from that morning until the end of the day, which was going to be about 25 minutes. I didn't have any assignments to work on, so I just sat there thinking the whole day was strange and really not convinced that I wasn't in trouble or something. This was on a Wednesday. Friday of that same week rolls around and I kind of forgotten about the events of Wednesday until I was headed for lunch and recess and I saw Entitled Mother walking down the hallway and entering Principal's office. Almost at the same time, Awesome Teacher flagged me down before I could go to lunch and asked me to follow her to the reception area outside of Principal's office. My heart sank and I knew I had done something wrong. She asked me to take a seat while they spoke to Entitled Mother. I couldn't hear anything from the office at first, but soon voices started getting raised and I heard the following. Entitled Mother said, Who gave you permission to test my daughter? Principal mumbling that I couldn't understand. Entitled Mother says, I didn't give you permission to test her. How dare you? Principal talking louder now in an attempt to be heard said, We needed to clear up discrepancy. Her records didn't match most of her teacher's observation. Entitled Mother says, I don't care. She's supposed to be in the special classes. Awesome teacher trying to calm down Entitled Mother says, Mrs. So-and-so, we're trying to tell you that's not correct. She's... Entitled Mother interrupting Awesome teacher says, Don't you tell me what's correct about my daughter. She's my daughter and I know her better than you do. Principal really confused says, Mrs. So-and-so, I don't understand why you're so upset. You have no idea how many parents would love to be sitting in your chair being told that their child can not only participate in normal classes, but might actually be advanced in some subjects. Her only deficiency is reading, and we're convinced that's only due to a lack of education rather than a learning disability. Why are you so upset? She says, I'm upset because you are all idiots. Your tests are wrong, these teachers are wrong, and I want my daughter enrolled in the same classes she had at insert previous school name here. The principal says, the tests are very comprehensive and accurate. We have a plan. Entitled mother cuts off principal and says, I don't give a freak about your plan. You're going to put her in the special classes or I'm going to pull her from school. I'm in the waiting area just wishing the world would swallow me up and hoping that no one else walks by to hear what's being said. Principal takes a very deep and measured breath and says, Mrs. So-and-so, we can't put her in those classes. She doesn't need them. You have every right as her mother to pull her from school if that's your wish. 
However, he pauses for a moment, we have evidence that her education has been neglected. You need to understand that if you remove her from school, we will be required to report this issue to DHS. Entitled mother says, did you just threaten me? Principal said, no ma'am, no threat at all. You just need to understand that she doesn't have any type of learning disability and treating her as if she does is negligence. Therefore, we have to report that behavior. She says, I should have never transferred her to this darn school. You are all idiots. With that, the door flung open and Entitled Mother storms out of the office. She glares at me as she literally stomps out of the reception area without a word to me and down the hall and out the door. I'm so embarrassed, almost in tears, and I'm thinking they're going to be sending me home now. I look at Awesome Teacher and Principal, and they're looking at each other and kind of shaking their heads and looking as to say, did that just happen? Awesome Teacher walks over to me and asks me to come into the office, and I'm barely holding back my tears. I sit down in the chair, and Awesome Teacher sits down in the chair beside me, and then she looks at Principal and says, may I? He nodded at her, and she turns to me, and the following conversation happens. Awesome Teacher says, I'm very sorry that you heard that. We didn't know your mother was going to react that way. We recently took a look at your transcript from the previous school, and we believe that a mistake had been made with the classes you were taking. Remember the tests you took a few days ago? Me, barely above a whisper, says, yes. Awesome Teacher says, those tests confirmed to us that you don't need any special classes, and I want to tell you something very important. Looking at me directly in the eyes, I want you to know that you are not dumb and you don't have any learning issues. In fact, these tests tell us that you're pretty smart. We don't know why or how you ended up classified as you were, but we're convinced it was a mistake. With that being said, we also know that you're behind in your reading skills. You're several grades behind, but if you're willing to work with us, we have a plan to get you up to grade level. What do you think about that? Me trying to wrap my head around things says, but Entitled Mother said I was going to be pulled from school. Principal says, yes, she said that, but while you're still enrolled with us, we'd like to move forward with our plan to get you up to speed. Awesome Teacher says, yes, but we need you to be on board with this plan because it will mean you'll have to give up a lot of your recess and it will be spending a lot of time in the library. Do you want to hear more? Me feeling a little better says, yes. At this point, they laid out my educational plan and the steps that would be taken and I barely heard a word they were saying. I had two phrases repeating in my head over and over. You are not dumb and might actually be advanced. After years of being referred to as the R word, someone was sitting in front of me telling me that I was not dumb. And then the fear that it all doesn't matter anyways because Entitled Mother was going to pull me out of school. That meeting had lasted through lunch, and the next period I was finally excused to go to was fifth period. I spent the rest of the day utterly numb and dreading what waited for me as I got home. When I entered grandparents' house, I expected that Entitled Mother was going to be there, but she wasn't. Grandpa told me to come sit down at the table with him and Naive Grandma so we could talk about what happened. Apparently, Naive Grandma had mentioned to Entitled Mother how great she thought it was that I was doing homework now. Entitled Mother told Naive Grandma that I don't do homework, and she ended up calling the school to find out why. It was on this phone call that it was discovered that I was taking normal classes, not special ed. According to my records, I had a learning disability and was not capable of functioning in normal classes. The yellow piece of paper he had given to Awesome Teacher was the official transfer from her class into the special ed class, and she raised the red flag that I didn't belong there. It was Awesome Teacher that insisted Principal talk to my other teachers, and they all agreed that they didn't think the records were correct. Awesome Teacher further insisted that I should be tested to confirm or dispute the records. After my tests were analyzed, it was determined that I should be in normal classes, and they had called Entitled Mother to come in to discuss the issue of my class assignments. Entitled Mother thought she was going to the school to confirm my enrollment in special ed classes. An awesome teacher and principal had gathered the test results along with my classroom work over the last week to show that I was where I needed to be. Entitled Mother obviously didn't tell Grandpa or Naive Grandma the whole truth about the meeting, but upon hearing that the school thought I should be in normal classes, they felt I should stay enrolled. This was one of the few times that I actually saw my grandparents pull rank on Entitled Mother and they wanted to give the normal classes a chance. The decision had been made that I was going to stay in school and participate in the plan that the school had come up with. 
I committed myself to getting up to grade on my reading and by the time I started my 8th grade year, I was at grade level on reading and was considered one of the smartest kids in my class of 70 students. I later came to realize that the reason Entitled Mother was so upset at finding out that I was smarter than she knew was because she had never bothered to hide her bad behavior from me and I knew all of her dirty secrets. This was both a good and a bad thing. The bad was that now she changed strategy and started her years long campaign of making me out to be an unruly lying kid. However, the good was that I spent the remainder of my school career being called smarty pants and nerd. I never once took offense to those labels. I was proud of them. I graduated 9th in a class of 77 students and it was all because awesome teacher didn't just take that yellow paper and say, okay. Without her persistence in getting me tested, I wouldn't have the life I have today where everyone who meets me thinks I'm a very smart person. Thank you awesome teacher, wherever you are, you changed my life. By far and away, this again proves that the best teachers will always be the ones who care the most about the kids and care the most about teaching the kids. As far as favorite teachers go, I really think there's only two possible metrics. One is they cared enough that the class was just legitimately good. Or two, they were fun. Whether that's just personality or maybe the class was just easy and fun. The only other memorable teachers are the ones who don't care or just flat out suck. For those of you that went through public or private school, do you have one or two memorable teachers who showed that they really cared about their job? Let me know in the comments down below. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. If you haven't yet, if you could like and subscribe, it would mean a lot to me. Whatever you do, whether it's liking, subscribing, turning notifications on, all of it helps grow this channel and I appreciate the heck out of it. So until next time, I'll see you all tomorrow with some more stories.